The reason I started making videos back in the back in the 90s was because originally I started out as a painter. And uh, at some point, after having painted for many, many years, I started really doubting myself as a painter. I didn't really think I was a very good one. And at that point, I was actually wondering whether I was supposed to make art at all. But then I decided to give it one more shot and try out uh, a media that I knew absolutely nothing about. And I knew absolutely nothing about video. I didn't know the history of video. I had never seen a video by Bruce Nauman or Vito Acconci or all these guys. Uh, so it was total virgin territory for me. And I thought that was brilliant because that meant I could start from point zero, uh, which I didn't feel I could do any longer with the painting because I'd read a lot about painting, I'd seen a lot of paintings, I knew a lot about painting so much so that I th actually felt there was no room for me anymore in painting. And my first idea, of course, was to use the camera and point it at myself. Now I'm also teaching a lot. Whenever I have students working with video, I notice that they do the same thing. As soon as they get the camera, they start filming themselves. So I think it's kind of like a very uh, almost primal uh, instinct, you know, that when you're young and you get the possibility of making something, you know, a film or a video, then you start filming yourself. I think it's kind of like the vanity of youth that sort of like uh, <laughs> becomes apparent in that way. Now I don't need to see myself in video anymore. Not so much. <laughs> I began uh, making video works back in the 90s and a bit into the, uh, to the 2000s. Um, and those videos back then uh, were very much uh, based on my interest in repetition and slapstick comedy and uh, trying to unmask the man, in this case myself, because I used myself as the model in the, in the videos, uh, unmask the, the man as this guy who is in control and uh, sort of like is, is managing things, this kind of like, you know, ideal of a man uh, who somehow has failed. So the videos back in the 90s were very much about failure on a general uh, level, but also failure on a more personal level because I was the guy who was appearing in all the videos. Then, uh, in the early 2000s, I stopped making videos and started working in other media. I felt somehow I'd used up uh, my own potential, you could say. The last video I did was uh, kind of symbolically, uh, myself uh, rowing in a boat and then shooting the boat down. So it was kind of like a very circumstantial suicide. And it was also the end of uh, my video making back then. Then, uh, not so long ago, I, I stumbled more or less upon uh, these kind of stock image or stock footage uh, uh, firms where you can go on the internet and buy uh, uh, video clips for advertisement or campaigning or whatever. And I thought that was very interesting. So I tried to search different themes. Uh, for instance, uh, men, businessmen shaking hands. And then I got like 600 video clips of uh, businessmen shaking hands. Originally, my interest was to try and make these kind of like stereotypical representations of the things that we associate, again, with masculinity and with success and uh, control and all the things that sort of like, in a stereotypical way, is associated with uh, successful men. But the interesting thing was that when I put together all these clips of, of uh, men shaking hands, it became extremely emotional because uh, you no longer saw the handshake as a symbol of a well-done deal. You started seeing the handshake as something very personal, so like skin touching skin, men wanting to touch each other. You start sort of like focusing not so much on the handshake as on the difference between the different handshakes. Is it a firm handshake or is it a soft handshake? Uh, that becomes very important when you put together all these different kinds of handshakes. So it, it somehow, I think, becomes 
very sensitive. It shows uh, another side that probably is not intended by the people who made these video clips, but it becomes very much about you know men wanting to to you know be be personal and and touch each other. It becomes about friendship, maybe even love, and that was something I didn't see in the beginning, but became very apparent to me after I put together all the clips. The same thing with the. Uh, the video of, uh, of the men who are sort of like talking on mobile phones, but you don't know what they're talking about, you don't know what they're texting about. So the only information you really get is the expression on their face. So again, like in the video with the, the handshakes, it becomes extremely much about uh, their emotions. It's very much about the emotional man, how he reacts. Is he getting uh, a text from his girlfriend? Has he done a good business deal? What, why, why is he smiling? Why is he reacting the way he does? That becomes very much the focus of this video. Uh, and that's what interests me in these videos. Uh, and again, I didn't really know what to expect when I started making the video. I thought it would become, become more like a stereotypical video of successful men. But to my surprise, actually, it became much more about men's emotion and very sort of like almost sentimental. In, in my early work, I used myself uh, quite a lot. First and foremost, because it was easy. I mean, uh, I was at hand and I didn't have to pay myself to appear in the videos. But also because it was very much about myself, about my, where I was in my life at the time. Um, in these new videos, I think it's actually uh, quite the opposite way around. It's extremely important that I'm not in the videos, that I actually had very, very little to do with the videos, that the material in the videos was not made for an art purpose or was not made for my purpose. It was made for, you know, advertisement or whatever. You would say, if I stage the handshakes or if I stage these guys uh, on their mobile phones, then I would kind of like control what kind of expression the final result would actually have. Uh, and I didn't want that kind of control. I wanted it to be something that I found or bought somewhere else meant for some other purpose that by me putting it together in the way I've done, it becomes about the things that I want it to be about, but it's not made for the purpose. So it's kind of like, you know, me digging my hand into this kind of like, you know, uh, big uh, cultural imaginary that we all associate with uh, certain situations like making a, a deal, being successful. And in order to do that properly, I think it's actually important that I didn't make the uh, filming myself. I didn't control what the final result was actually going to be. Well, in the early works, uh, I was interested in like, you know, what happens if somebody fails once? I mean, what, how does the meaning of one failure change if you make the same failure like 20 times? That was very much my focus back then. And you could say in a sense that, that I've taken that idea and brought it into these videos as well. Because again, what does it change when you, instead of having like one handshake in a sequence of other clips, in for instance, a, a movie or an advertisement, Instead, you have like 17 handshakes in a row. Then all of a sudden, you become extremely focused on the individual handshake. What's the difference between this handshake and the next and the next one? You know, and that's kind of like uh, is also what I think happened in the early video works. That, for instance, I did a, a video where I kept falling off a bar stool. Uh, and if I only did it once, it would be an accident. If I did it twice, it would be, okay, very unlucky. If I did it 20 times, it would be like, there's something wrong with me or there's something wrong with the bar stool. And you start focusing on the small differences between the way I'm falling. Uh, and I think that's actually something that also happened in the new video works, that you become extremely aware of the differences between these sort of similar events. Sort of some of the things I really liked about making videos back then, which was the simplicity of it all, you know, that you could just put up a camera on a tripod and do something in front of it. It kind of like uh, went away. 
Uh, but you could say with the new videos, I sort of like found myself again, because in a sense, all you need is a computer and an editing program, and then you can make these kind of videos.